Hey to all the XJWs, PMO JWs, and JWs around the world, because I know you're watching. I kind of want to talk to the Jehovah Witnesses in general today, because I know you're watching. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're on your way to becoming a PMO anyway. <laughs> but do you ever have a hard time just trying to befriend other uh brothers and sisters within the organization do you always feel like do you feel like just something was quite off did you ever feel like an outcast or a misfit you know because that's how i felt my entire childhood trying to befriend jehovah's witnesses you know and worldly people i was i was too much of a church girl to hang out with the worldly people but i was too i guess i wasn't i don't know I, I just didn't fit. I didn't fit anywhere. You know. Um, but a lot of the friendships that I had was one-sided. Meaning, what I mean by that is, I would be always the, the first one to say hi. The first one to initiate going somewhere. The first one to initiate hanging out. The first one to uh, ask if they wanted to go out and service with me. Always, always. It was never them asking me. Right? It was always the other. It was always one-sided. Um, I had quite a few friendships like that. You know, I would, I would, uh, you know, try my my damnness. You know, because it's like, okay, yes, these are supposed to be your brothers and sisters that are supposed to make it with you through Armageddon. So if you don't befriend these people, then uh, you're going to get caught up in Satan's world and befriend the worldly people. And you're going to die, pretty much. Everything is Everything links to death in that organization. Everything. Everything that Jehovah's Witnesses do it's because they don't want to die. Ain't that, isn't that bad? That's so bad. That's sad. You should be able to just, if, if you, if you believe in God, you should be able to love God. No matter who your friends are. <laughs> no matter who you hang out with. You know what I'm saying? If you're a believer in God, and if you believe God created everyone, why would you then go and join up? Well, you know what? That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. But, uh, I, yeah, I had one friend in particular. I would always be the one, the first one to initiate everything, hanging out, field service, everything like that. And I did this for years. You know, it was very emotionally draining. You know, but I kept on because I really didn't have that many friends to begin with as a Jehovah Witness child because your, 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 your pickings are slim, for one. <laughs> you know, and I felt like I didn't vibe with all of them. You know, there's no such thing as real vibes in the organization. You can't just vibe with people and be like, hey, you know, they seem like a good fit. They seem like a good person. Granted, I vibed with more people outside the organization than I did in. But I had to repress those friendships because I thought that, hey, those aren't going to be the people that are going to survive Armageddon. It, even though they were some of the coolest People in the universe. They're still going to die at Armageddon because they're not Jehovah's Witnesses, right? But it seemed like the ones that were were just so just uppity. Uppity. Just uppity. Thought they was better than everybody. Thought they was more spiritual than everybody. You know, I guess I wasn't spiritual enough for some of them because, um, you know, I guess because my mother wasn't a regular pioneer. You know, she was a working mother and things like that. You know, um, you know, you, you have to fit a certain mold. Not just you, but your whole family has to fit a certain mold for in order for you to even hang out with some of these people. You know, I think a lot of the reason why um, I was, quote unquote, friends with some of these people is because our mothers made us hang out together. And after we got grown, that stuff stopped almost immediately. 
right? So when our mothers used to make us hang out together, it was easy because we didn't have to try to hang out together because our mothers befriended, they befriended each other. They clicked actually better than, than the children, me and, the, and their kids. But we hung out, you know, and then after we got older, that's, that stuff stopped almost immediately. Um, I would try to initiate the calls. Hey, let's hang out, let's do this, let's go out of service, this, that, and the third. And I was always the one to initiate it. And then one day, I just was like, you know what? Let me just stop and see what they're going to do. I just stopped all the initiating. I stopped calling. I stopped uh, asking if they want to go out of service with me. I stopped asking if they want to hang out, to go out to eat, whatever. And you guessed it. They didn't call me as much as I called them. They didn't want to hang out with me as much as I hung out with them. Right? Uh, what you doing? She up here punching a helium balloon. Something wrong with you. Anyway. She distracted me. But yeah, I was always the one. And then all of a sudden I stopped. You know. Nope. Can't go on the camera, honey. And. That made me realize that the, it was me trying to initiate it. Trying my darndest to keep the friendship because I didn't have that many friends to begin with. I'm gonna tell you something. My mother, my mother controlled my friendships, even within the organization. Oh, she's not baptized, so um, you know you want to kind of limit your your association with her. Oh, she's she's a good friend. She's a pioneer. You know, she has family members that are Bethelites. Hang out with her instead. Don't hang out with that other girl. Don't hang out with that other girl. She's not even an unbaptized publisher. Mm hmm No, don't go to that. Don't go to that skating party. Don't go to that skating party. They always be juking and stuff afterwards. I done been to them skating parties. Them, some, them skating parties are not good. They're immoral. Back then it was called juking. Now they call it twerking. <laughs> but no. Yeah, my mother used to control my association like that. Even within the organization. Now you have some parents that it don't matter who they are. As long as they got JW written on their forehead, they good to go. But my mother was a little bit more constrictive. You know what I'm saying? She, she was filtering out my friends for me. I couldn't pick my own friends. So, in reality, as a child growing up, I really didn't have any real friends. You know? I didn't realize that then. I thought my I thought those were my real friends. I just thought something was wrong with me. Like, am I too ugly? Am I too fat to hang out with you now? Or something like that. Like, I didn't know what... I, I thought it was... I thought I was the problem. But the problem was... Uh, the problem is with inside that organization, you cannot... There are no real, there are real vibes, but for the most part, there are no real organic, authentic vibes that you, that, you know, to just vibe with a person, you know what I'm saying? To, to, to have, have that inner connection of energy with, with a person, not just because they have witnesses. And that's a lot, it, it, that's why I say acquaintances and association. Oh, no. okay. That's not a friendship. Oh, no. I you just associate with these people. You just are acquainted with these people. You're not really a real. We're not really friends with them. Uh oh. Screen turning black. Screen turning black. But yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of those friends that a lot of those so-called friends that you see when you're a kid. A lot of times you don't see them anymore when they become an adult. 
And a lot of them, like I said, let me get back to the uppity part. You know, they have family that are Bethelites, family that are pioneers. So they figure they too uppity to hang out with you anyway because, you're, you know, my mother was spiritually single. You know, I was a, I was a fatherless child according to the organization because my father was not baptized. He didn't even go to the Kingdom Hall. He went for, he bat, he studied for a few months and then he was like, nah, this ain't for me. You know? So I was a fatherless child in the organization and everything. You know, I, I, I didn't fit the mold. You know what I'm saying? I was kind of an outcast. You know, uh, and a lot of, and a lot of these uppity kids in the organization, they look at, they look down on you and they're like, it should be, it's a privilege. It's a privilege for you to hang out with me. You know, you're this way. I'm that way. My family's like this. I'm like that. Oh my goodness. People think, oh no, we're humble. We're humble people. No, 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 baby. No, baby, if you're an elder's kid or something like that, if you are of some sort of stat, upper status as a kid, you're going to be uppity, you know. It, it's very rare to find humble kids that, that have, like, elders and pioneers as parents. You know what I mean? A lot of them are uppity for the most part. Um... So yeah, I just, I stopped doing the initiating and then the communication stopped. And I realized that was not a friendship. That was me carrying dead weight around all those years. They didn't want to vibe with me. It wasn't, a, it, it wasn't nothing wrong with me. Because after I woke up, oh my God, I started clicking with everybody. Left and right, left and right, left and right. You know, I started, I started developing real friendships with people that I vibe with. It doesn't matter if they were witnesses or not. You know, I was just in the wrong place. I, I was a misfit. I was an outcast. I did I just felt like I didn't belong. Something didn't feel right in my gut. I'm like, all of these sisters, they seem so fake. They're only friends with you because you're a Jehovah Witness. Because if you get this fellowship tomorrow, they'll never talk to you again. That's not a real friendship. Friend real friends are friends that are friends with you no matter what your beliefs are. No matter what your what your spiritual role, your religious preferences are political preferences, it doesn't matter. If you're friends with someone, they're your friend. And then, you know what I'm saying? No matter what any of your personal beliefs are. You know, I hung out with a bunch of sisters a couple of years ago. We were all going to a restaurant. And it just felt like I was in a car full of kindergartners. You know, and I was Pimo then. I was Pimo then. Like I said, it was a few years ago. I've only been woke for uh, going on almost five years. It'll be five years in December. I kind of started waking up from religion in December of 2016. And I totally woke up from religion uh, January 2017. Right. But they were like, they were just joking around about some things and they were like, Oh, you better, you better not do that. You don't want to be in the back room. You don't want, you don't, you don't want the elders to, to catch you. I just sound like I was in a room with a bunch of kindergartners. Kindergarten. Don't, don't, don't let them find out. Don't, don't, don't. I'm going to tell the elders on you. Oh my goodness. It, it just seems so elementary after I woke up. I just felt like I was in a, 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 a car full of kindergartners. Now, before I was woke, it would have been funny, but now it's just like, oh my God, these sisters are so intimidated by the elders. They're so intimidated by the CO. Oh my God, when the CO would come over, they would try to act all perfect. 
You know, I want to cook for the seal. I want to cook for the seal so that they can see that I'm a good Jehovah Witness and I can cook. And this and that and the other. I'm a good sister. I remember actually hosting a brunch at my house for the CL. I felt so privileged. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I felt happy and I felt proud at that point. But now it's just like, you know how when you're at work and like the big boys come in, everybody got to get on their P's and Q's and dock their I's and and, and, and cross their T's and, and everything so they can look all perfect when they when they come in. You know, you got to be on your perfect behavior yeah. and everything. Why is he still a bed? Oh, It's the same thing. It ain't nothing but a company. When the CO comes, all the brothers and sisters all act perfect and all, everybody get their hair done and this and that and the third. Try to act all perfect. What were you like? Then when he leaves, it's right back. Right back to your lazy self, falling asleep at the Kingdom Hall and everything, you know. Try to raise my hand, never answer me, you know. <laughs> you always answer your kids, you know. It was, a, it was an elder like that. He used to always answer his kids, never answer none of the other kids. I'm like, dude, you see all these other kids raising their hand and you only answering your kids. My mother got mad. I, I, I did a, I did a video on that. My mother was, my mother snapped off on an elder one time. Because me and my little brother was raising our hands a hundred million times. He did not. And we were sitting right in front. You know, we were like the second row. We were raising our hands, raising our hands, raising our hands. He saw our hands and my mother knew it. And she, the more, the more, uh, the more she didn't raise. And, and it was another family in front of us. We were raising our hands all day. He did not answer us he yeah, answered his kids and he answered who he answered the kids that he wanted he to answer the child. my mother snapped out they had to take her to the to the elders room the child. because she was like well you still got a lot to learn i don't care how long you've been in the truth i don't care if you've been in the truth 30 years or not you still got a lot to learn oh yes she told this to one of the elders in the kingdom hall <laughs> So at one one point, at one point she was very restrictive of friendships, and the other point, if she felt like we were being uh, bullied, at one point she spoke up. She was one of them sisters that spoke up, you know. But uh, yeah, so yeah, if you are if you're trouble witness and you and you're struggling trying to make friends with people, that's not your fault. It's just um, you just don't vibe with them. You know, do you vibe with everybody when, that you go to work with? No, you don't vibe with all of them either. But I, what I look like trying to befriend everybody that I work with, that's impossible. You can't do that. You're not going to vibe with everyone. It's the same thing with the Jehovah's Witness organization. You're not going to be friends with all of them. These are your brothers and sisters. <laughs> no, no, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. They're just people that you go out of service with. People that you uh raise hands and, and comment on uh, on Watchtower study with. That's it. Now, if you do prefer these people, great. But chances are, if you don't want, if you decide you you want to make up your own mind, I I was watching um I was watching that new movie by Jennifer Hudson, Forrest Whitaker, uh, Marlon Wayans. It, it's called Respect. It was a uh, biopic for um, Aretha Franklin. And Aretha Franklin's father had said something. She had said something to her father. Forrest Whitaker played her father. And he was like, Have you lost your... What is she in the room? Have you lost your damn mind? She was like, no, I found my mind. And I was like, oh, I found my mind. I didn't lose my mind. I found it. So when you find your mind, that's usually when, when a lot of people tend to uh, leave you. Because you finally have a mind of your own. And you can finally vibe with people that are real. 
You know, the whole time that I was in that organization, it felt like I was living in like the Truman Show or something. It's just everybody was just so fake and phony and I'm just looking around and it just, it just didn't seem right to me. I felt like Truman, I did. Anyway, and on that note, before, cause she's really struggling trying to get in this, in this picture with me, but if I don't see you later, <laughs> Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> this is Mackie E.P. Mo J.W. Jones. Question everything. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. And don't be afraid to do outside research. All right? Love you all. Peace.